I'm going to repair this Marshall JCM2000 DSL401 amplifier and um, the symptoms are that uh, when you turn the power on, the power seems to come on, but then when you take it off of uh, standby, there's no sound. You strum a guitar, have the controls turned up, uh, still there's no sound. And the reason that there is no sound, it turns out, is because there's a fuse that blows back here. The mains fuse is okay, that's why the power comes on but there's a high voltage, a fuse that protects the high voltage section of the amplifier. Uh, the high voltage is coupled to the, through the transformer to the power tubes. And what I found out in past experience is if the, one of the power tubes is shorting out, drawing too much current, then it will blow that fuse. So I believe that's the problem here. And what we're gonna do is try to uh, repair that problem replace the fuse of course but then to repair the problem so that it doesn't blow fuses again sometimes getting the chassis out is one of the harder things so uh, in this case the tolex on the case was binding up with the chassis a little bit making it difficult to get out and i'll have to glue that back down to the case before i put it back in so i have it right side up what i've got to do now is flip it over on the uh, bench so that I can uh, inspect the underside of it. And I'll use a couple of wood blocks to prop up the uh, chassis so that the uh, tubes are not resting on now the Now that we have the, the bench, the chassis flipped up so we can get to the bottom of it here on the bench, uh, I need to talk about a safety concern here. Even though the amp is unplugged and it has been for a few minutes, the filter capacitors of the amp can retain a high voltage charge of let's say four or 500 volts so as a matter of safety we need to discharge those capacitors so that we won't get shocked um, as we if we touch a, a component or a lead that has uh, is attached to the high voltage now these are the four power tubes right here and each one on pin 7 is the plate voltage which would be connected to the high voltage lead so i'm going to take a lead which I have connected to chassis ground. And then this lead is through a 100 ohm resistor, which I like to use. You can just discharge directly with the uh, alligator clip or the lead that's connected to ground, but I like to do it through a resistor just to avoid a, a spark. I don't like sudden sparks. So I touch it to pin seven, hold it on there for a second or two. I'll do all the tubes, just one should actually discharge it through the circuitry, but I'll do it for each of the, and if you're not sure which pin might have the high voltage on it, you could just touch all of them. Again, it's unplugged. There's no power now, coming to this. Now, what I'd like to do is look at, there are some screen grid resistors on this uh, amp and let me get a probe here they're 100 ohm resistors r69 r70 and then r71 and r72 they all look fine normally if they're damaged you can see um, some damage on the resistors they'll be burnt these don't look. I'll check them with the ohm meter also, but these are sometimes damaged if tubes are arcing, which I suspect has been the problem with uh, with this particular amp. So I'm going to check those with the ohm meter. I tested each of the screen grid resistors. There are four of them, and they're each sitting right at 100 ohms, so those are fine. So the next thing I want to do is to replace each of these EL84 tubes, the power tubes. To replace those tubes, I'll need to remove this tube guard that holds the tubes down from working their ways loose and put in a new um, match set of EL84s, which I'll now do. These are the four tubes that I removed, the old tubes, and the only thing that I notice is that this tube here is, the others look 
nice and almost new. The paint on this one is kind of toasty. Uh, obviously this one is overheated compared to the others. The others, the paint is uh, unburned. On this one it's a bit burned. So what that tells me is either this tube is really mismatched from the other three and has been drawing more current than than the others or it's starting to short out is another possibility. Uh, so for these new tubes that I have installed, they are a match set, so the matching shouldn't be a problem. And um, they're new, so they shouldn't be shorting out. And I'm going to set the bias according to manufacturer's instructions. We'll do that next. These are the new tubes that I installed. I use uh, JJ's unless the customer ask for something else. Uh, I found if you get them matched and burned in, they seem to be very reliable, good sounding tubes. As far as the biasing of the amp, here is a Marshall Service Bulletin that explains that they're, they use the current draw method rather than the crossover distortion method to do the bias and um, has the procedure and then also down at the bottom what the um, settings should be the bias setting should be measured from uh, the probes and they give the pins. I'll explain that a little bit more later. And for the different, for several different amps here and for the DSL 401, uh, it says to set it at 1.375 volts. And uh, I'll explain that a little bit later. We could just take it from there and set it for that and everything would be good, but I'll try to explain why it is that we're setting it for that value. Okay, this is from a section of the schematic for this uh, DSL401 amplifier and I'm focusing in on the four EL84 tubes here and um, as I mentioned earlier the plates are pin 7 up you can see here it's denoted pin 7 that's the plate that has the uh, high voltage on it for the, these tubes and um, the other thing of note is uh, here is the connector that we're going to be using to access the uh, test points where for us to set the the bias and um, pin two the middle pin is the ground and then these outside pins one and three are actually connected together and each of those is connected to the cathode of the EL84 tubes and you can see there's one they're all connected together so each of the four EL84s are connected together at the cathode and brought out to this test point one or three they're connected together and um, there there is a resistor between the cathode and ground and it's 10 ohms. In some cases they use a 1 ohm resistor uh, for this bias measurement uh, making it more making it very easy to calculate what is the current. In other words if you measure a certain number of millivolts then the current will be the same. It's just like uh, 30 millivolts will equate to 30 milliamps. In this case they've used 10 so there's a factor of 10 to be taken into consideration. So uh, there's two things I, I would like to know to check the bias setting and like I said we could just go by the 1.375 voltage setting that Marshall has told us we should use but I'm going to try to explain to you why we're using that value and in order to make that explanation I need to know the plate voltage from pin 7 of these tubes and I need to make a calculation um, using this 10 ohm resistor value right here. So um, I'll do that next. I'm going to measure the plate voltage on these four EL84 tubes. Um, I can measure on one of them. They're all the same. So um, what I want to do is use pin 7 and pin 3. 3 is the cathode and pin 7 is the plate. And I'm going to need two hands to do this. So um, let's see if I can do it. Maybe I can do it with one hand. Again, we're dealing with high voltages here, uh, 
I have it off standby, so there's approximately 400 volts on some of the points here. So we want to be very careful with our hands. These are lethal voltages. If you don't know what you're doing, then um, not comfortable doing this, you probably should not be doing it and leave it to um, someone who does. But uh, here is pin 3. And then here is pin 7. And if you can see, the reading is 389 volts as far as the plate voltage. I'm now going to explain uh, their recommendation to set the bias voltage at the test points at 1.375 volts. First of all, Ohm's law says that the voltage is equal to current times resistance, or resorting the equation there, current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. Now we know that the voltage that they say to set it at across that resistor is 1.375 volts, which is the same as 1,375 millivolts. We also know that the resistor that we are measuring across is 10 ohms. So using the, the equation that we derived above, current is equal to voltage over resistance. Plug in the values. Current is equal to the 1,375 millivolts across the 10 ohm resistant, resistor divided by the 10 ohms, and it gives us 137.5 milliamps. And that's a combination of the current going through all four tubes since uh, that uh, the cathodes are all connected together and we're measuring across one resistor for all four of those cathodes. So uh, the current, since they're a matched set of tubes, we would expect that all four tubes would draw the same amount of current. So we can take that 137.5 divided by 4, and the current through each tube would be 34.375 milliamps. I've gone to this website here, uh, tedweber.com, that has some handy calculators for calculating uh, the settings for biasing tubes. And what it talks about here is uh, that it's for you have a choice, class AB at 70% or class A at 90%. We're going to assume that this amplifier was designed to run at a uh, class AB push-pull configuration and that 70% uh, would be a, a good setting for the uh, idle current through the tubes. So looking at the settings down here, we can pick our class. We picked AB. We can pick through a collection of tubes. We're going to do EL84s, and then the plate voltage is 389 that we measured. And if we calculate the bias, it says 21.5 milliamps would be the bias current that we would set it at for idle for a 70% uh, uh, kind of a reading, and that would be normally what we would use. So that kind of uh, is doesn't mesh up with what... Marshall has suggested in their service bulletin to set it at 34.375. So let me come down here to another calculator here. And this calculator here is used to calculate the plate dissipation based on a given plate voltage and cathode current reading. And in these calculations, 5% of the cathode current is assumed to be screen grid current, which is the, you know, a common way to, to, uh, uh, is a common approximation and the calculator is for a single tube. So let's go over here and put in some values here. The plate voltage is 389 volts and the cathode current, let's just put in the uh, Marshall recommendation 34, we'll just call it 34 milliamps and then we'll hit the calculate power button over here and what we get is a plate dissipation of 12 watts. So what that says is if we set it at the recommended value that Marshall has listed in their service bulletin, we're going to be running at the maximum plate dissipation for the EL84s, which uh, to my way of thinking is, um, well, to anybody's thinking, that's pretty high for the idle current in this uh, configuration that we're running here. So in place of that, let's replace this 32 milliamps back to uh, 21.5 that the top calculator recommended 
and hit the calculate power button <clears throat> and then it says that we're going to be setting the the plate dissipation at 8 watts if we go with the 20 approximately 20 milliamp setting or 21.5 setting we're going to be about 8 watts idle which seems like a more reasonable number for me so uh, the tubes will last longer run a little bit cooler so that's what we're going to set so instead of going with the recommendation that uh, Marshall had made on their service bulletin I'm going to change my plan and go with a uh, a setting in line with what this calculator recommends okay so I'm, I've gone back to the sheet one more time before and up here in the uh, the black font was where we calculated based on what Marshall seem to be recommending on their service bulletin for the bias to be set at and then down below is what I've calculated based on our measurements and the tube charts is what I believe that we want to set it at for uh, a little bit milder setting not as hot as what they have recommended and it would work out uh, 22 milliamps for each tube uh, which would be 88 milliamps for all four tubes and using uh, voltage equals current times resistance again uh, we calculate with the 88 milliamps times the 10 ohms that, are, that we're going to be measuring across would be a measurement of 880 millivolts at the test point so that's what we're going to measure and set it for setting the bias there's a connector right here with three pins to it and the center one is ground and then the outside two are tied together so we can clip onto either one and you got to be careful here I've used small alligator clips with the <clears throat> insulator pulled down over the center one so that it won't short out and then I have brought those small alligator clips up and clipped them on to the leads of my uh, voltage voltmeter and I'm going to set it into the millivolt reading and turn on the amp going to have to let it warm up just a second. Probes connected to the voltmeter and it's currently reading 0.852. Um, the calculations we just did said that we wanted to get 880 millivolts which is the equivalent of 0.88 uh, volts and we're very close to that this is the potentiometer right back here that we're going to adjust again we have high voltage on this and we got to be very careful use insulated tools and not touch anything while we're adjusting it but I'm going to slowly adjust this and try to put it on uh, went the wrong way 0.88 and it looks like it was set nowhere near to what uh, the Marshall surface bulletin would indicate but there's 0 0.88 0 0.880 so that's where we're going to leave the bias and uh, we'll see how it sounds at that level played the amp on the bench with the chassis out for quite a while just to make sure that the uh, tubes none of them glowed red which would have indicated that there was either a problem with the tube the biasing circuit or uh, that the bias was set in correctly and uh, also listen to the sound it sounded okay uh, recheck the bias to make sure it had not drifted and have everything the way we want it we believe so now I put it back into the case and we're going to give it a final test with some actual guitar playing.